Ten-month-old Alondra Martinez was born with a severe liver condition. After undergoing unsuccessful treatments, she now suffers from end-stage liver disease. Without a transplant, Alondra will die. With a severe shortage of pediatric cadaver donors, the doctors at USC University Hospital and Children's Hospital Los Angeles have turned to new options, living donor transplants. Unlike other organs in the human body, the liver can regenerate itself, allowing a portion of an adult liver to be transplanted to save the life of a child. So for the adult, uh, it's a relatively minor loss in the liver tissue, but also liver regenerates. And in about two months, the liver will grow to the size of the liver that the patient had before donating it. Alondra's parents proved to be unsuitable donors. But for Alondra, someone she has never met, who lives hundreds of miles away, has agreed to donate one-third of her liver. It is the ultimate gift of life. I accidentally landed on a site that told about liver donors to children. And I read it, and I, I was amazed to find out that years grew back and that these children did so well with the liver that you give them that I just got a really good feeling inside. And so it's like the very next day I signed up. I actually have three grandchildren, one's two, and then I have two that are the same ages as this little girl. And every time I look at them, I think of that little baby and what that mom must feel when she looks at her and knows that she's not going to live very long if she doesn't get a liver. And I just, I just can't imagine what that might feel like. So, uh, I was trying like to ignore it, like she didn't need a, a liver transplant. I was trying to ignore it, but then I can. I'm scared. I'm scared for her because I don't want her to die. That's the worst thing that's in my mind. I want her to live. It's very gratifying to save the child's life, and that's why I think our particular donor is such a given person and uh, such an altruistic person, and I think it's a great act of love on the part of the donors. This will definitely change my life. Um, this is a, a I don't know, my, it just everybody, I, I didn't tell anybody that I was doing this. I only told my family and my work and maybe four friends because I, I thought it ruined the specialness of it to go around telling everybody. I was happy. I was scared too because I thought it was going to take years and years for my daughter. But thank God to the person who was going to donate my daughter a liver, part of her liver to my daughter. <laughs> to be a donor, a living donor, to give up part of your liver is extremely courageous. Uh, it's a big operation. Having said that though, we don't find anybody that I can think of looking back has regretted what they've done, regretted what they've been through, and it's never been an issue with them. I, I don't feel like a hero, I just feel like that I'm lucky that I got the opportunity to take part in this. And... I wish I could meet her so I could give thanks or because they told me it's anonymous. It would be so nice for me to be able to hold the baby um, or even see the baby. Um, that would just be the, that would be the greatest and I hope I get the opportunity to do that. But if I don't, I'm not going to feel bad. I'm still going to be happy that I did it and I wish the baby everything. On the day of the transplant, surgery begins at USC University Hospital, where Dr. Genick procures a portion of Katie Hale's liver. Across town at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, Alondra's parents have one final moment with their daughter before the surgery. Okay. There we go. There we go. Hey. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll take care of her. We'll take care of her. We'll call you downstairs. 
while you're downstairs and we'll let you know how she's doing, okay? It's okay, Mom. Okay. Now, Dr. Nicholas Jabor prepares for the careful removal of Alondra's defective liver. Actually, I just came from the surgery at the USC University Hospital. The donor surgery is going, is going, I mean, we're doing very well. And right now we transect the liver as we speak. So within probably one hour or so, the liver should be here. Yes, you have uh, some fluid in the abdomen. We call it ascites, and also our sign of liver failure. Timing is critical. Both teams work in tandem to minimize the time between extraction and insertion of the transplant organ. And the next step is to take the liver off the vena cava. When in that USC University Hospital, we finished the operation on the donor. Recipient right now, uh, we have the other team of surgeons removing the liver. And uh, it's going to take another maybe 30 minutes before we're ready to implant the procured liver. The Martinez family should be very optimistic. They have a great opportunity to have a healthy child. It's hard, like, you don't see, like, the time passes. Like, it's stuck in one hour. Like, it doesn't move the clock. Because we're, we're watching the clocks and it doesn't move. You can see, although it's a tiny piece of the liver from the donor, it's almost, it almost looks like the whole liver for the baby. The surgeons attach the new liver and check to see if it's functioning properly. You can see already the significant amount of bile that this liver is producing and it indicates uh, excellent early liver function. Okay, finally the operation is over. We're closing. More than 12 hours since the transplant surgery began, the doctors take a final moment before talking to Alondra's parents. So you have a glimpse at the glamorous life of transplant surgeon <laughs> to save somebody's life. That's what make it worth it. That's why it feels great to do this type of procedures. Hello. How is she doing? She's doing very good. Yeah, thank How are you, you doing? Thank you. Thank you so much. So the operation went very, very good. Yeah. We had no problems whatsoever. The liver worked right away. Yeah. It was making lots of bile. Uh, how's the donor doing? Well, her operation went very good too, but I haven't seen her. But uh, oh, it's a lady. we expect, yeah, okay. we expect her to do very well. Tend to her. Oh uh, well, you, you probably will have a chance to meet her later on. Oh yeah. Not today, but in the future. Yeah. yeah. Because, like he said, he w it was anonymous. Yeah. I guess the person just want to do something good for somebody else. That's uh, very honorable. Yeah. Thank you for everything. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Take care. Thank I'll you. see you around. God okay. bless Thank you. you so much. Okay. I'll Thank see you probably okay. tomorrow. Okay. Thank okay. you for Thank everything. You so much. Bye bye. Okay. 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 Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Oftentimes, before the operation, the small babies are very fussy. They don't sleep well. They don't smile much. They don't play. And after the operation, you just see 100% turn around. They're just entirely different children. They are playful, they sleep, they eat, they smile. And you just sometimes don't believe that this patient just had this operation just a few days ago. This is Katie Hale from Utah, who is the uh, donor. A week later, both patients meet each other for the first time. That my baby is fine, that she's gonna be okay. Thanks of her, of Katie, she's gonna be fine. We're always gonna keep in touch. Yeah. I feel like I have a new grandbaby. I'm gonna. I know when her birthday is, and I, I'm gonna get pictures, updates, growth, and yeah. we're always gonna be friends. Forever. <laughs> I hope, I totally recommend. To be a donor. She does feel like a new addition to the family. Today, when I first looked at her, I, I couldn't imagine part of me was inside her, and, 
how it's always going to be. And I, I don't know, I feel a special bond towards her. We are come from two different worlds, but I think that we'll always be close. And her mom told me she would send me pictures of her all the time as she grew. And I'm just looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to have her little face on my mantle with all my other grandkids. My hope is that she's going to grow up, she's going to go to school, and she's going to be okay.